Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 35 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about non-local means filter or NLM in short. And what is non-local means filter? Well, this is uh, quite commonly used in CT, computer tomography and MRI, but I'm not sure if you have heard about this in microscopy, but it applies to microscopy images also. And this is a great filter because, especially if you're working with 3D volumes, uh, even for 2D images, this is a great filter because it preserves edges, just like bilateral filter that we covered in one of our previous tutorials. So how does a non-local means filter actually work? And before jumping into the code, let's actually quickly look at it. So here is the uh, non-local means algorithm. And again, if you are, uh, if you are uh, from mathematics background or physics background, you probably understand what they're trying to say. But just to put a little bit of context to this, it estimates a value based on the weighted average of all pixels in the image. So this is our weight. OK, so it's uh, the weight weighted average of all the pixels in the image, except the family of weights. It depends on the similarity between the two pixels. So what does that mean in plain English? If I have a pixel right here within my medium gray uh, area, it looks at all the other regions that look similar to this region and then takes the weighted average of all of these in a small patches, okay? Uh, so just to quickly illustrate that on an image right here, if you look at these, it, it looks at all the similar regions and then takes a weighted average. OK, same thing if you look at these regions, if you're trying to clean up this area, it looks at what are the all other regions, you know, that have a similar, uh, you know, pixel makeup. And then it actually looks at the average. Now, uh, for that average, you have to pick a patch size and you can also define the patch distance OK, for this average. So this is a non-local means uh, filter in summary. And again, I added another example here. Now let's actually see how it works in Python. Again, please go ahead and Google search for non-local means filter and find the original paper to get much more in-depth knowledge about this filter. So the intention here is to make sure you know what it is and how to use it in Python. So the intention is not to uh, describe the entire paper for non-local means. And maybe in future, if we have time, we can do those discussions. So uh, coming to our uh, spider IDE, as usual, I have written a few lines of code. So let me copy these few lines of code at a time so we can talk about it. OK, so first of all, I'm going to import the re uh, required libraries and non-local means filter is available as part of scikit image dot restoration. Again, please go ahead and Google search for scikit image and non-local means and you'll find the documentation and you can see what else it can actually do. So within uh, scikit image and restoration, probably because they use this for image, image restoration by denoising, it's available as part of that uh, module. So I'm going to import denoise NL means. I'm also going to import something called estimate sigma from the same from the same module. Now, as part of non-local means, one of the parameters we are going to provide is sigma. And to that, you can just provide a sigma value if you know where to start with, or you can just estimate the sigma based on the image and give that as an input value. Okay, that's the reason I am importing that. Everything else should be pretty standard, right? I'm going to import NumPy. We'll see why I imported that in a second, and OpenCV and others. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Let's go ahead and estimate uh, sigma. So the way you estimate sigma here is, again, we are importing this estimate uh, sigma right there. So we are going to estimate the sigma of our image. And by the way, in this case, let me expand this. I'm going to put my as gray equals to false. So we are going to work on a color image as is all three channels because this specific function, non-local means in scikit image works on a gray, uh, on a on a color image or a grayscale image. So uh, while estimating the sigma, I'm saying my multi-channel equals to true. So it's going to get the sigma from all three color channels. And I'm going to look at uh, the mean value right there. OK, so my sigma estimate. Let's run the code up to this point and have a look at the numbers up here. So my image, again, because I'm using image as float and io.imread here, the image is going to be a floating point uh, numbers with values ranging between 0 and 1. Okay. 
and uh, uh, you can see the three channels here and my estimated sigma is coming up to about 0.064 if you want you can just give your own sigma value but let's go ahead and use that as a starting point now how do you apply non-local means filter and uh, there are various parameters that you can supply let's actually uh, let me unwrap this a little bit so it's easy to uh, for you to see let's do that okay so first of all uh, i'm going to call my denoise non-local means nl means okay and the first parameter as usual is our input image or numpy array and the next parameter is define h again you can go ahead and look at what these parameters actually mean in the documentation and uh, let's see if i have written a quick notes about uh, uh, larger h allows more smoothing between dissimilar patches so that's what that means if you uh, select a larger h when the patches are dissimilar there is a bit more smoothing that's happening within each patch that's what the parameter h uh, refers to okay and the fast mode when we say equals to true when the fast mode is false a spatial gaussian weighting is applied okay again please read the paper uh, to me fast mode equals to true means it's actually working faster i actually tried it with fast mode false the difference in the end result is at least on the images i tried was so minimal uh it, it wasn't worth uh, the extra time that it actually takes when you say fast mode equals to false okay so it, because it actually does something extra when you do fast mode equals to false Patch size, like we know, uh, you know, the five by five pixel patches in this case, and patch distance is three pixels, and multi-channel equals to true because we want to apply this to a color image. This is pretty much it. And now let's go ahead and look at visualize the results. That's it. So first of all, let's run the code until this point so you can see our denoise image is over there. So now our denoise image is also a floating point image with values between zero and one. Now, if you want to save these images again, uh, you have to convert them into 8-bit and you know how to convert. If you want to save or even for visualization, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to convert them because I'm using OpenCV for visualization. OK, if you use PyPlot, no, no, it makes uh, no, I don't it doesn't make much of a difference. OK, so the library that I use uh, is again scikit image. I'm going to import image as U byte. This converts our float into 8 bit. That's all it is. So I'm converting both my input image and the denoised image into 8 bit. So if you run these lines. OK, and look up here, you see how I have my in image converted to unsigned integer 8. So now it's ready to be saved or plotted, I mean visualized and so on. Now, one other thing, if I'm going to use OpenCV to visualize my images, I demonstrated this a few tutorials ago, our images are going to look uh, a bit weird because our blue and red channels would be uh, uh, mixed, okay? Remember that C OpenCV handles images as BGR and not RGB. So let's convert our images from BGR to RGB and that's what these two lines are going to do. OK, so let's run these two lines finally. And again, this is all just post processing. The entire thing, the denoising is done uh, right there. I'm just cleaning up so I can see it better. That's all it is. Now we are all set to uh, visualize the images. So let's go and use cv2.imshow right there. I'm going to look at my original image, which is the image that has been converted to 8-bit and also BGR to RGB, which is my original image. I did exactly the same for my denoised image. So let's visualize our images. And here is the NLM filtered, and here is the original image. As you can see, very nicely denoised, okay? And the edges are also very nicely preserved, as you can see. Now it actually makes things pop. I mean, now look at this nuclei there excellent cleanup so non-local means and bilateral and also total variation which we'll talk about later on and bm3d so these are the two that i'm going to talk about in the next couple of tutorials they are excellent denoising algorithms much better compared to gaussian because they preserve edges so i hope you learned something useful and go ahead and uh, write the code yourself test it out on a few images to see if this works for you thank you very much